Our first uh, talk of this section is Brian White, tracking solar accumulator, solar design, T-square, clamp-shaped solar cookers. Cool. Here he comes. This, uh, I have done this in about 20 years, so I'll probably get stage fright. But um, this is um, not going to be so much about those topics because. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, basically, what happened um, in <coughs> society is maybe in 1975, all of the medium to low tech uh, solar research was suspended. And way back then, uh, the people didn't have the tools that you and I have now, the scientists, so that we have more, just as individuals, if you went out into your uh, work shed or wherever, you could do as much as they could ever dream of doing yourself. Because now we have uh, laser pointers and laser levels and uh, computer power that they couldn't even dream of. And uh, so uh, the solar design uh, T-square is just a very, very simple way of modeling the sun physically going over a solar cooker. So you can actually design the surfaces just using um, a laser pointer or a laser level and a T-square. And you model the device over um, with, with, say, wet modeling clay over a, um, uh, just underneath the T-square. And it's like a claymation thing for, for modeling. Uh, and they didn't have anything like that way back then. Uh, so it's, it's not that hard anymore to do scientific research that they couldn't do. And currently there is, uh, there's absolutely no funding for appropriate technology. Appropriate technology is uh, what they need in places like Haiti and Darfur. Yeah. And it's not funded, so they have uh, these tiny little solar cookers uh, where people uh, people have a lot of misconceptions where uh, you would think that um, they, they've decided uh, that one, you only need one, you must have one bounce of light to get to the cooking pot. So th this is why they have such tiny little solar cookers. Uh, but if you have two bounces, you can have a bigger reflector, more heat, and um, faster cooking. And you can easily design these things if you have uh, a bit of clay or soil even from your backyard. It's a clay uh, area here, and uh, uh, some mirrors that you can buy from Michaels. And, uh, uh, a square. Um, the other project I had was um, it, it, the, when you do that, that design it comes out uh, clamp shaped uh, uh, in my case but if you went for three or four bounces of light which might work it will look different but probably similar to clamp shape too so the tracking solar accumulator was another little thing I did and there's uh, a brilliant Austrian uh, engineer scientist called uh, Wolfgang Schaeffler. And back in, back about early 1980s, he decided that the best way to um, have uh, constant all day solar cooking for people in parts of Africa was to make a reflector that would deform over the seasons. And he designed this thing he first thought of it in uh, in university in Germany. He designed it more or less in his mind. And he d discovered that he couldn't possibly afford to make this thing in Germany, so he headed off to Kenya. And he made one um, uh, with the help of people in, in some um, sort of uh, charity there. He actually went there, spent six or eight months and made one. Now these Schaeffler solar um, cookers are all over the world. Solar kitchens are all over the world. Um, uh, but it's still pretty high engineering. And 
the solar uh, tracking solar accumulator is basically a um, an alternative to it that might be lower engineering and um, uh, so actually easier to make uh, nowadays to buy um, en masse, you know, lots and lots of them. But um, it's kind of stuck at the almost at the design stage at the moment because of this. Um, so I'm going to try and explain why. There's another thing I made. The first thing I ever made was called a pulsar pump, and I made it in 1987. I discovered the pulsar effect by accident, and I had a fully functional working one made in uh, 1989. I'm sorry, I didn't quite understand what you just said. What What was it? It's called a pulsar pump. Pul pulsar? Pump. Oh. So, pulsar pump, yeah. Oh, pulsar pump. Yeah. So it's, it's uh, on the internet. Uh, anyway, on, uh, in 1989, I had a fu fully functional one. Uh, it got published in a magazine, and nothing happened. And then, uh, maybe around 2000, a guy called Russell Hoffman put in uh, his uh, website called All About Pumps, where just about every type of pump in the world is listed on it. And, and um, um, explanations are given, etc., etc., and nothing happened. Uh, I put it on YouTube maybe three years ago, and after about 60,000 views, a guy in England made one. Uh, that was last year. So now, this year, uh, up to May, it was uh, researched a little in Queen's University uh, in Ontario. So it takes a really long time to get ideas out there. And there, is, there are reasons for this which uh, are not, not really science related. Um, you know, 20 years is quite a long time. So if you have any ideas that you just uh, don't expect instant results from. <laughs> um, uh, it's a very simple pump and the science behind it, the, the reasons for why it works are a little complex. But it works, it's very simple. And so I'm going to try and explain why um, things are so slow. And this is my reasoning, um, thoughts on it. Uh, humans are a social animal. And just like other social animals, like say chickens, we have a pecking order. And uh, so we're more like, I guess, baboons with our pecking order. And the pecking order works both ways. So this explains why um, monarchies still exist and they're still hereditary in uh, Europe. It also explains uh, the whole letterman phenomenon, uh, you know. So letterman and staff. So um, in science, the pecking order goes as follows: politician, funding committee, scientist. So the politic. It doesn't matter. There was a scientist in Ireland. Um, because I come from Ireland, um, a Canadian guy called uh, Dr. Norman Macmillan. He wanted to research the pulsar pump back in the mid 1980s, but he couldn't get funding, so it didn't happen. So um, the pecking order in science is politician, funding committee, scientist. If he, if the scientist doesn't get money to do some of this stuff, it's not going to happen. It doesn't matter how much he wants to, because uh, scientists are. Um, maybe slightly uh, money-oriented. Um, so it, it, it's... Um, well, it's um, so the, um, the blocks to research happening are um, so uh, related to how society, society works. And if you have an invention or an idea or a concept, you've got to get even one or two people within the pecking order high enough up to get interested in them before anything is going to happen. And um, uh, it's, it's quite a challenge sometimes because lots of people aren't even in the particular pecking order because nowadays society is broken down into so many different groups that uh, if you're not in that particular group uh, you don't even exist for them. No. Um, so, anyway, I don't really know what else to say, but <laughs> that's it for me. Sorry.